Just arrived from China. As we're going into winter and the snow is starting to fall in Turkey, we've got a Chinese diesel heater, which is a copy of a German one, worth about 2,000 something New Zealand dollars. And this one we got here for about 360, apparently identical. So time will tell. It's all here, and all ready to install. There's our heater, the control panel, digital control panel, fuel filter, exhaust muffler, vent, and ducting, hose clamps, air intake, fuel line, and exhaust pipe and even the diesel tank installation. So we'll read the instructions and get into it. Right, now that I've got the diesel heater, I still need a pile of parts like extended uh, duct tubing and uh, quite a bit more. So I've done a little bit of research on uh, Google to find out where it is. But um, i to work quite a few kilometers to um, to find out exactly where I'm going find these places and it's just hit and miss finding a plumbing shop here so that might help so again I'm about to destroy Luca's room and install the heater right down in the aft area and so far we have the control panel and the reason why I've cho chosen Luca's room is that under here is the diesel tank which we'll take the diesel from and we have a power source here easy access to the aft area where the actual pump will be the actual heater so you probably haven't seen it here before but this is uh, it's the rudder and we have Cables up there to one steering wheel. This is our uh, auto helm equipment and spare stern line. The, that one. And so over there, you can see the water level reflecting, and the heater will go just in here. Got our exhaust pipe. Exhaust pipe ready, which will go directly across. And here is the heater itself. So this is the exhaust pipe with its little muffler all the way through. And scarily, we've got to make a hole in the hull. We've got some inox stainless steel exhaust pipe. Didn't have exactly the right size, so this is what we're going to use. And a hole saw to go with it. So here's our drain pipes and our exhaust pipe. Getting our 
ducting done and it's lucky we use the littlest people to <laughs> get through and hopefully pull it out this side. Oh, there it is. That's as far as I can get it through. Yeah, I think it's stuck on it. There we go. Awesome. Thank you, Nina. Right, cold, calm morning and our diesel heater is running. And it's just a little breath of hot air coming out of there from the exhaust. Just heading off for a walk before our lockdown for the weekend. Turkey's announced another lockdown, so tomorrow night, no, tonight. Tonight. Tonight, until Monday. Eight o'clock, is it? Nine, I think. Yeah. We're just meeting adventurous for a walk. So, lockdown on Polycandros, and it's cold and wintry. And they're running low on cake. And that's the last of the cake, so we need must. This was banana cake, and I've decided I'm going to do apple cake because we had a few apples that were going off. So, what's so, in here? So, in here is about one and a half cups of dried fruit. I've used dried figs and um, prunes and apricots and sliced apple so they are approximately three apples sliced and peeled and caught and, and then here is water oil and baking soda so far and there's an egg gonna be added and we have been gifted some gluten-free flour which i'm using up because i'm probably supposed to be eating gluten and it works out quite well Oh, and of course and the... I like nuts, the rest of the family doesn't like nuts, so when I put the cake in the tin, I put half, top half of nuts rather than putting it in the cake, and the other half stays nut free. Nice. Funny thing is, it's a recipe from our kids' steak here. We were always making such yummy things, we were baking fresh bread and fresh muesli and fresh soups and stuff. So I copied all the recipes many, many years ago, and here we are in Turkey with us on the boat. I don't really have a measuring cup, so I just use one of our mugs, which it's probably quite generous, but I just converted whisk. This is a very high-tech whisk. So this is now flour, baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, one egg, there's usually butter in here, but I'm not supposed to be eating dairy either, so I'm just using olive oil and water, and I mix it all up. 
mixed it up and tried to get the clumps out as best as I can and the mixture was a bit thick so I added some soya milk because not dairy so it's about this sort of it's quite a liquid gloopy dough, dough. Mm. and actually last time I added some chocolate chips too so you can really be creative with what you want to chuck in there and I even found non-toxic baking paper it's without the silicone yeah which I'm super thrilled it's about. really a roasting dish isn't it yeah so it's quite a chunky mixture I like it really fruity well, it's always moist cake everyone likes moist cake so sesame seeds um, very common here in Turkey, they use them for a lot of their baking and I love them too. And walnuts for brain health. Walnuts and they get if you put them on top rather than on the inside they get really crunchy and yummy and I love them. Now what are you making while the cake cooks? Uh, creamed cauliflower and sweet potato soup. So again I'm not really supposed to be eating potatoes so to find sweet potatoes here not to be yes. confused with the kiwi kumara. Yeah, it's very similar, right? Yeah. So they are really yum. And the cauliflower is in season at the moment. So I think cauliflower and sweet potato will be going well to give us some onions and garlic, some coconut milk, and some yummy spices. So we will see how it turns out. Nice. It smells yum. And it's rubber. Cold and unpleasant outside there, so soup is just the right thing. So this is our only kitchen tool that we bought in Turkey, like electronic, and it's really good in winter for soups because soups are cheap and easy to make and nutritious and they warm you up from the inside. So. We can only use it because the generator is going outside at the moment, so we have to carefully plan the use of those kitchen gadgets. Yeah. So we've had a weekend in <coughs> doors in the yacht through lockdown and it's been a week and of cooking and baking and we're having our first attempt at dumplings. So what's in here? Um, mince, string onions, some grated ginger, some grated carrot and uh, for the bag full of fresh herbs there's parsley, rocket and dill and some garlic some spices so it's about half half a pan for you. our friends from Pisces um, Ebet is or his Chinese heritage and she has taught us how to do this of course here it works out but she said about half half of meat and vegetables so you can chuck in with the whatever you please dough here ready to be rolled and that was made this morning and um, it's matured nicely and gotten all stretchy so hopefully we'll live up to their standards. What's happening here now? Oh, trying to roll out dumpling wrappers <coughs> but our friends on Pisces too have obviously got quite a knack at it so I'm not sure I'm doing a very good job. Do you reckon, Pook? Does it feel like Ed Martin and her bed spout? No, not at all. This was so easier to work with. We have a few that are finished. And I've got a pot, pot with water to come to boil. And this is a dipping sauce. 
so it's half balsamic vinegar and half soy sauce and I've grated some fresh ginger in and chopped some really fine garlic super yummy so we are cooking dumplings so you have got a pot of boiling water and you put your dumplings in and the water is going to stop boiling because the dumplings are cold and once it starts boiling again you take half a cup of water and pour it in i won't do that because we have already done it but you do that three times so three times you pour half a cup of water in and bring it to the boil again and then after that they are ready to eat welcome my friend to the long white cloud Altero 